Good morning. I got up pretty early this morning. Uh, 5.30. That's or pretty early for me if I'm not going to work. It's a beautiful morning out here. I wish I could tell you that over our six week break, I got everything organized, everything just in tip top shape to go into the winter and fall. And I had a perfect vision for this next year of our YouTube channel, but that is not the case. <laughs> the grass is just all torn up here under this picnic table. We did have a nice rest and a good break, but things have been a little hectic. And today I'm gonna to feature one um, aspect of things being hectic, and that is pigs escaping. There shouldn't be pigs in, in the lawn. Not generally, no pigs should be in the lawn. running up here <laughs> to where these pigs are supposed to be. I know they're not up here. The goats are up here. <laughs> Yesterday though, it was frustrating because They've been staying in the fence. They've been happy out here on the pasture eating grass. Um, yesterday though, what I think happened is they completely flipped their water and they were thirsty and they just ran through the fence. That's my best understanding of what happened. The pigs roamed our yard, dug up the sod some and then Bree, um, had to just lock them in the barn. setup is set up. I was telling you earlier that I wish I could tell you I had everything together, but I don't. I don't think this is I don't think this is like a unique thing to exposure on YouTube wanting to have everything look good. I think all of us experience this actually. You know, when when we're <clears throat> when we're worried that what we have and what we do, who we are isn't going to be good enough. I'm not doing anything terribly innovative out here. <laughs> I am moving the pigs in, in the pasture. What we're doing though is doing what we can do in the context of our lives, in the context of really focusing on our kids and family and homeschool, and then, and then we're doing what we can do to grow good healthy food for um, our families and do it in as ethical a way as possible. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're gonna show you. We're gonna show you some of the struggle. Uh, let's get these pigs. I'm feeding them a little bit extra this morning because well, I want them to eat grass out there, and they do, they eat a lot of grass. I don't want them to be hungry today. I want them to stay in the fence.
What are you doing out here? Mama Peggy, come on. Well, things just got a little goofy. Because I can handle fending off the goats and getting the pigs in their fence, but the mother pig got out at the same time. It's so frustrating because I, I charged I charge her fence just to the max and put it on its own charger just the day before yesterday. So she shouldn't be escaping, but she did. <sighs> oh my gosh. The irony, the irony of this is that, watch Brown, he's gonna run through the pig fence again. No. No! Hop, 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 hop! He's walking through the fence. Oh my gosh. Good morning, chickens. The irony, as I was saying, is that I was trying to talk this morning about how hard it is to keep pigs in. And then the pigs have actually behaved well this morning, went in their fence, but the goats and the cow would not give up on getting in there to taste the pig's food. The other irony is that this has been going perfectly smoothly for like six days. Moving the pigs, feed the pigs, the pigs go over. All right, let's see if we can get Mama Pig back in here. Come on, Mama Pig, let's get back in here. Go in there. Just gonna have to feed the cow and the goats a little bit of feed out here. I don't normally feed them. Something that I kind of think is funny is how many people warn me in the comments that pigs are really hard to contain and that um, that electric net fencing wouldn't contain them. And, and I was like, oh yes it will. Electricity will always contain a pig. I've kept pigs in just a couple strands of electric and had no issues containing them. Pigs will test any fence. They're extremely curious. They're very active. They're very smart. They'll, they'll go and they'll test every part of a fence, anywhere they could possibly get out. They'll get out. They're also very tough. Pigs do tend to do well with electric because they're very conductive, low to the ground, short legs, and they're heavy, so they get good contact with the ground. And I've had such good experiences with electric in the past that when I kept pigs in an electric fence, and then I took the fence down, the pigs would not even leave the area because they had that psychological barrier of pain from where the fence had been. I have this little idea, though, as to why I've had so much trouble out here. I think it's because I've been moving the pigs. I think it's because it wasn't one fixed barrier, but they knew that they could go other places because I'd taken them other places. And I, that's my theory for why electric has not worked as well here with moving them as it has in the past when they were stationary. Hey, so can you see baby chicks? This is probably the most challenging morning I've had with the animals for several months. Just like the most frustrating, where everything goes wrong. Just because we have those hard days, it doesn't mean that we don't like that we're doing this out here. It doesn't mean that we, we wish we were doing something different. It doesn't mean it's not a story worth telling. One last check on the animals. I'm supposed to go to work, not at the hospital. I'm helping build a house. I just don't want this to go wrong while I'm away. So I'm just checking on them. Well folks, I'd like to encourage you in your lives. Just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to engage with people as you are. 
because that's how you build real relationships. It's also how you can encourage people with your story. It's telling it like it is. Sharing the challenges and the good things and the bad things. Brownie, you better behave. <laughs> All right, thanks, folks. This has been another great day on the homestead. Bye-bye.